The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. My brother, my brother, made an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I am your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother in 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. I'm sorry it took us so long to get here, Pittsburgh. It's been a few years, um, 10, almost 10 years. <laughs> and I am sorry about that. You're very close to my home considering. Yeah. We were here, we did perform in 2008, but the podcast didn't exist at that point, right. so no one showed up. Right. I, we were all doing our, our three-hander 200,000 Sundays. We took Billy Crystal's <laughs> shit and went wild on it. Man, that. That one crushed. Yeah. This crowd, <laughs> this crowd, this crowd loves fucking Billy loves Chris. their Billy, huh? <laughs> right, so we had, uh, we're staying near the airport, so we had uh, a little bit of a long drive to get here. Uh, it's like 45 to 50 minutes. That was the in. most mass apology we've ever yeah. received from a single crowd. <laughs> Took yeah, a while. We, we saw it. We did it. Sorry, we <laughs> fucked up. And the, the dude in the car, Two things happen almost simultaneously. One, he turns on a radio station that I thought was a joke. It is all uh, hair metal cranked up to like very obscene volumes. I'm talking, Dawkins. Talking, Dawkins, our new podcast. Dawkins, our new podcast. Chat and Rat, because he, he was listening to Rat, rat quite a bit a band also. I never heard it called Enough Z Enough. <laughs> Very good. Do you guys remember the uh, the like late night promotional video that they would show that was like all hair metal hits of the 80s? It's how I learned about the existence of More Than Words by Extreme, which was probably in there also. This person unironically bought that album and played it for us today. And I kept looking at the clock like there's no way it's this far away. It's the same city. It's impossible that there are still 47 minutes remaining in this commute. Very early on, the guy looks at Dad's unwashed shirt. Did Dad tell you he lost his luggage? Yeah. Is that okay? He looks at Dad's shirt, and the guy said, uh, uh, "Ohio State, are you from Columbus?" And Dad said, "No." And the guy said, "I hate Ohio State." <laughs> Wait. Anyways, oh. remember to tip and review. Yeah, yeah, it gets better. He points to like this Notre Dame media pass. This guy he said, "I love Notre Dame." And Dad's like, "Okay." And, <laughs> and the guy said, "Uh." I was going to go there, but I think I wasn't smart enough. I look at the clock. There are 43 minutes <laughs> remaining. I, Impossible. I'm in the back seat. I'm in the back seat like clean car, fun conversation. <laughs> the problem there is you can't, when someone says something like that, like I think I wasn't smart, you can't be like, hey. Like you have two options either. Hey, you're smart enough or yep. <laughs> I, we don't know you. And then we get out of Eddie Money's Playhouse and walk into the Carnegie Museum and Library. The cultural whiplash was... Yeah. It, it, was, it was extreme. It was extreme, yeah. It was more than words. Now, I took... I t so, hi. Welcome. I have two quick jokes for you that my uh, daughter wrote. My daughter wrote these two jokes and texted them to me. I think it's going to be a hot new segment. Um... Jokes my daughter texted me. Actually, before I forget, uh, Sophia, are you here? Sophia? There's probably... Hi, Sophia. Uh, if it's the Sophia I'm thinking of, uh, you're 12 and it's your birthday. Uh, I don't know why you're allowed to be here, but I'm thrilled that you are. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sophia. Now, here are the two jokes I was texted by my daughter. We haven't heard these. I'm very excited. What did one watch say to the other watch? 
This isn't a, a backdoor riddle me piss, right? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> what did one watch say to the other watch? Watch you up to. <laughs> now, that's pretty good. But this next, this next one's on some fucking next level shit. <laughs> what did one banana say to the other banana? There's a formula here that I am picking right. up on. Yes, but get ready for the twist. What did one banana say to the other banana? That was an appealing joke. What? Whoa, holy shit. Sorry, what? So wait, yes. did, 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 did one yes. of the bananas tell the watch joke? And this is now part it's, two. We've zoomed out of the snow globe. Oh my God. <laughs> we've seen your, your daughter. So your daughter has created a Stephen King-esque banana who has written himself into the narrative. <laughs> right, exactly, right. Uh, <laughs> I want more. I want this to keep... I know. I, those are the only two she sent me, though, but they are grand slams. How about some advice? Yes, That's let's what, do it. Uh, do you think... We I should can, start with a Yahoo? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I do. This uh, Yahoo is sent in by our very own Paul Saborn. Thank you, Paul. It's asked by... It's, they have a name, but the Wi-Fi has unfortunately failed me once again. It's because all of y'all appeared. We and, almost tweeted, everyone please get off the Wi-Fi. We <laughs> need to finish prepping the episode. Uh, it's, you should be sitting quietly and patiently for the show to start. Just staring blankly ahead at the stage. Picturing what it will look like when our three bodies are up there. Our proximity should be reward enough. <laughs> it's by Yahoo. It's not worth it. It was Yahoo Answers user Squidgism. <laughs> Beg to differ, sir. Very worth it. At least I hope it's a hard G. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> well, Do you think old-timey people, when, like, paper was first invented, like, somebody had to be like, can we just call it ink instead? <laughs> I can't believe we peaked seven minutes in. Damn it. Yikes. Uh, Squidgism asks... <laughs> Cavemen ghosts? Why does no one ever speak about ghosts of cavemen? You always hear people say that they saw a young Victorian woman or old ladies or soldiers. Those are the three. That's the three ghosts. You never hear anyone say, did anyone see that big hairy man slash woman? Just wondered if anyone had any thoughts about this strange, random, but oh so true question. Oh, so true. Oh, so true. Mm. Uh, the... I would say the Fucking end. Bill Maher over here asking Yahoo answers. Isn't that poignant? <laughs> sure, Bill. Sure. Edgy. Now, I would say that the answer is obvious. Okay. And that is unfinished business. And that is that cavemen have pretty simple business to finish. <laughs> I guess that's true. Right. Like, I wanted to sneak up on that big animal. Oh, no, the big animal killed me. Oh, now I'm a ghost. I can sneak up on that well, big let animal. Well, me, let me check on, what my, let me check on my, uh, my to-do list for a day. Eat big... Meat hunk that tips car over. Check. Did yeah. that. Yeah. Juice, Go back to sleep. Drew some wild shit on a wall. Yep, did that. Don't, don't get eaten by the big tiger. Ooh, ah, I didn't do that one. <laughs> Shoot. And also, Darn. they've had the longest to complete their unfinished That's business. That's a good point. They've had a lot more people to help them. Yeah. Now, when you get the Victorians, very complicated business. Oh, a lot yeah. going they on in that They had so brain. much business to finish. Some of them were still trying to invent stuff that doesn't exist yet. Right? They're like, ah, I'm still trying to figure out that chip hack. Yeah. Ah. Incredible flying machines, perpetual motion, yes. etc. That, soldiers and old ladies have the most difficult business. <laughs> right, sure. Right. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Came in, the KM ghost must have been fucking psyched when the, the meteor hit. And they were like, yeah, motherfuckers, we got you. <laughs> we win. <laughs> it's our planet there, now. There goes our business. We got that big bad T-Rex that was bothering us oh so much. <laughs> the timeline there is, yeah. is sketchy. Well, the, 
I expect tweets every time I say, anytime I talk about cavemen, I'm going to get tweets. That's why I left Twitter. <laughs> That's why you left Twitter. Just, oh, the barrage of cavemen tweets. <laughs> yeah. But you also can't get away from the siren song of talking about cavemen. So I, wanna ha- I, wanna, I want you guys to think about something. So we all agree that we evolved from single cell organisms, right? Yes. I know Pittsburgh sure. fucks with evolution. I know y'all are down, down with Darwin. Uh, so we evolved from single cell organisms. So at some point in our arc from single cell organisms to Homo sapiens, there had to be a first ghost. <laughs> Fair? Fair? So that must have been like so fucking scary if you're like, okay. <laughs> Let me just get through it. Okay. Gronk, don't turn around. <laughs> and don't freak out. <laughs> but Sylvia is standing behind you. <laughs> Gronk and so Sylvia? Gronk and Sylvia? <laughs> this. <laughs> this fall, we're rebooting Dharma and Greg, but with a twist. It's a first ghost. So yeah. becoming a ghost is an evolved trait of survival. Don't hear a lot of, like, bacteria ghosts. That's true. Thank I, you. I do think about not a lot of animal ghosts. We don't get a lot of, like, I, I saw, you know, a bird ghost. That doesn't happen. It's always human ghosts. Well, what's their fucking business? You want to talk about easy business? They're done. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> Hey, um, here's a question. Do you think I could swap out my usual lunchtime La Croix for a White Claw and not get caught? <laughs> the ladies in my office are pretty chill and or may not even know I'm crushing a cold one. <laughs> Please advise before I go buy a case. That's from Sneaky Seltzer Social Worker. Are you here? Wait, are you here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Well, uh, the first thing I would point out, which Griffin is now demonstrating, in a thermos, you could be drinking anything. It's water. (laughs) Or is it bone broth? (laughs) It's not. It's water. (laughs) Or am I getting jacked on bone broth? (laughs) It's just water. Uh... No one's going to notice. They are chemically identical, I would say. Yes. I would say you should maybe buy one of the other brands than White Claw, because those are starting to become the sort of Xerox of Spike Seltzers. There's a lot of other brands. One fucking hipster with Justin dying on this hill. Yeah. Everybody else is down with the fucking claw. Don't get me wrong. They're not going to be as refreshing. Yeah. Not going to have as many great different flavors. They're not going to have sponsors of this episode. <laughs> and if, if I'm not incorrect, uh, also, laws will still apply while you consume laws them. Laws still correct. apply. This is what you've forgotten. There ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. So, so even if you are caught... Oh. Do you think when that, that little meme started to go around, the makers of White Claw were like... <laughs> I wish you wouldn't. Uh, Uh, Are we going to get in trouble for this? Is that going to trace back to us? uh, um, My dad likes claws. Dad dad. dad fucks with claws. I I love a nice claw. I feel like it's the one thing that uh, me and uh, my 19-year-old sister-in-law, Riley, can really relate on. Sure. It's like common ground. Not that she drinks underage. She got me. She's not 19. It's legal consumption. You just can't purchase. What? Is this true? We were in South Carolina. The laws are different. Fuck off. (laughs) The point is this. I bought us matching There Ain't No Laws When You're Drinking Claws t-shirts. Oh, that's so sweet. The sad, you know the fucked up thing about that? That They shouldn't be allowed to be on sale because the more White Claws you drink, the better idea that seems to buy matching White Claws t-shirts. Also, if you were consuming your claws at the time, you could just steal the shirt. Yeah, that's, that's good, true. That's Damn. a good point. Yeah, you could damn. actually just drink one claw and then steal a bunch of claw. <laughs> that's infinite free claw, except for the first one. I would, uh, question asker, I would point out that if you went out to a restaurant for lunch with some coworkers and had like a beer, it might not be great, but you're not gonna like get fired for that, right? Now, 
admittedly, doing it in the office does change a lot of factors the math, there. Yeah. But I think it's totally cool especially, and chill. Especially if you go, this is La Croix. <laughs> it's a placebo. There's no alcohol in White Claw. <laughs> I have a Yahoo here. Okay, go for it. Uh, Sid Ross sent this one in. Thank you, Sid. It's Yahoo Answers user Alex who asks. And hang on, just hang on tight. This one takes a little bit of like mental staying power to hang with it. If the owner of a restaurant points at your lasagna and asks, how is it to show the table next to you? And you say, good, then he goes, no, you should say very good. And the table next to you who haven't ordered yet are waiting your response. So you say under duress, very good. Even though it's not, would you feel bullied? The owner doesn't even smile at you after, but the table next to you are laughing. What if I said the truth? Last week it was much better to be honest, or something like that. Why did I feel under pressure to say his average lasagna was very good? Was I a weak fool? <laughs> no, you should say very good. No, not today, owner of restaurant. <laughs> I I'm won't stand standing up this. to you. It's good. <laughs> Not bad. Actually, good is the lowest I would say to somebody. At, about at the their unwritten food. bit of this is, if I'm at a restaurant and the owner's like, has a lasagna, good is the absolute right. bottom of the spectrum that I would actually say to another human being's face. Because there's no way to say, there's no way to answer that question with a good that doesn't make it sound like total dog shit. <laughs> How was it? Good. No, you, oh, could, no. you could say like this. How was it? It was good. <laughs> You could do two syllables like Randy Quaid in Christmas Vacation, like, it was good. <laughs> if, you do that, if you do that, then I'm going to believe you. You could take it like real loud and go like, it was good. Good. Yeah, I believe that. I buy that. But if it, How like, was it? Good. <laughs> now, that's surprised. That's not good. Now, normally I eat here and it's, it's real garbage. You know what? It's good. It's good. <laughs> Whoa. Actually. If you have a mouthful of, of this tall pasta, you could also just be like, good. And no one will, you're eating it. It's got to be decent. Maybe direct eye contact. How was it? Good. <laughs> French me now. <laughs> Do you think that this is why Guy Fieri has to work in such superlative language? <laughs> That if Guy Fieri, dressed in his, in his style as he's wont to do, walks into a restaurant and be like, it's like, this chili's good. People are like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Guy Fieri said like it was it. good. I do like he it. Didn't, he didn't say it was a, a, an astroblast flavor gasm <laughs> that sent him to the moon and back. That is true, though. Also, if you're, like, publicizing or writing, you know, the menu for the restaurant or whatever, you can't just say, like, we have some lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want out of lasagna? It's edible. <laughs> some. We have some. We have some. Is it good? I don't know. Has a so lasagna. Multi layered. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato y. Has a lasagna. Available. <laughs> Reasonably priced for the quality. Uh, the other day I was sitting at a red light with my windows down and I heard the person in the car next to me sneeze. Should I have said bless you? I say bless you to everyone I can because it's polite, but I don't know the protocol here. I still feel guilty about it. That's from Gridlock Gazoontite. Are you here? Okay. That was a, quite a delay. Uh, oh, boy. No. Yes. <laughs> Probably not. I just, I, uh, you're counting on a lot of things, and the biggest thing that you're counting on is that they are going to hear and understand and not have, like, this, like fight or flight response reaction to being yelled at while they're driving their motor vehicle. Yes. There is that, yeah. If I sneezed and someone yelled, excuse me, it's gonna take so much, it's gonna have to pierce through so much like mental conditioning that I've experienced in my life to actually reach my brain without it turning into like, I'm gonna fucking shoot you with a crossbow. <laughs> if, if someone yells at me while I'm operating a motor vehicle, part of it better be on fire. Yeah. That is gonna be my assumption is like, the bumper, the bumper, Justin. Because that, that is the catch-22 of this scenario, that if you yelled and I turned and looked and you were still looking at me, that's a problem. But if I turn and your back eye forward, I'm like, what? What happened? What was that? I couldn't even process what you were saying. 
This, uh, that happened to me once when I was driving. I still lived in Huntington, and I was driving to work, and I saw a woman had, like, the gas tank open, and the, like, the gas cap was, like, hanging from the little plastic string, bouncing around. And I, like, got up beside her, and I was, like, waving my hands and, like, honking the horn. And I watched her, like, roll her eyes and speed up away from me. And I was like, oh, no. So what I did... <laughs> There, you, is, you there could, is no good ending to yeah, this story. You could guess for a million years and not come up with something palatable. I did what any normal human being would do, and I called my dad, radio DJ Clint McRoy. Oh, my God. While, while he was broadcasting. Travis. And I said, uh, here is the make and model of car and the road we're on in case they are listening to your radio station. Please tell them that their gas tank is open. And he did. Hey, listen. Listen, let's not get down on dad. Man had to fill four hours, six to 10 a.m. every morning. Yeah, that's right. a gimme. Yeah. My idiot son just called and you won't believe what he told me. <gasps> I did not know that that was a power that was available to us. When I, when I was getting fucking speared in the playground in middle school every day, I couldn't call dad and be like, yo, get on the playground. Say that Jack, come back, seventh grade. He knows who the fuck he is. He needs to cut it out. <laughs> or else you're going to get Tim McGraw to come down here and kick his <laughs> pants. <laughs> he couldn't cuss on the radio, so he would say, I'm going to kick your pants or fun stuff like that. <laughs> I'm going to stab you in the pants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was telling like that. Another Yahoo? Yeah, I love that, Griff. Thank you. <laughs> Hand of God. Okay. Uh, okay, this one was sent in by several people. Thank you, several people. It's Yahoo Answers user Jastin who asks. What? Jastin. <laughs> okay. Hi, Jastin. It's, What's happening? It's, it's my friend, Jastin when you buy, Nakarai. When you buy the generic version of My Brother, My Brother and Me, that's one of the three brothers. Well, it's Jastin, Tarvis, and Gorfin. <laughs> And I'm the brother who's in the middle. <laughs> Tarvis McClory. <laughs> Jastin asks, well, I can't say it. Jastin asks, my teacher is having me keep a lemon on me for the next month. What is he trying to teach me? <laughs> so in my class, my teacher is having us keep a lemon with us. He says not to put it in the fridge, not to leave it in the car, or it'll get icky, just to keep it on our person. He says that we may or may not understand what it means. He showed us his extremely hard lemon he has kept for 20 years. <laughs> Any ideas on what this lemon is supposed to mean? Okay. Let's run through the possibilities. One, extremely cynical person trying to give you a lesson in childcare. Okay. This is what it's like, folks. It's a lemon that you can't throw away. <laughs> till it's hard and withered. And you can't leave it in the car or put it in the fridge. <laughs> you have to keep this lemon with you all the time. Now, it's filled with delicious juice, but you cannot <laughs> squeeze. It's also possible that this teacher just was like cleaning out the fridge and found a rock hard old lemon and was like, I'm gonna fuck with these kids. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad produce, but a good teaching moment. <laughs> because maybe the thing that they learned that it means is don't trust teachers. Yeah. yeah. I can confuse them so much that they won't notice the syllabus was only one month long. <laughs> I'm really flying by the seat of my pants. Because they're going to say something like, when you become an adult, you'll figure out what your lemon is. And then they'll wait and hope that everyone starts nodding. <laughs> There's a sentence in here. If you're a teacher and you're doing a project like this and you say the words, you may or may not understand what it means. You're a fucking bad teacher. <laughs> hey, kids, go out there. Read, uh, I want you to read Old Man in the Sea by Sunday. Uh, Sunday, okay, that's weird. We don't have school on Sundays, but fine. <laughs> Monday morning, like, so it's a, it's a fishing book, right? I, yeah, I don't Listen. know. I, I never understood it. I was... If you, you understand it, it's up to you. I don't know what you want me to do. Teach you about it? Right. I like it. It's like abstract teaching. Like, I don't know. What did you learn from it? <laughs> Just something you can take away. Hey, I don't away. understand this math problem. That's how it works sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's life, kiddo. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, we've all got lemons. <laughs> Did you say limits or lemons? 
<laughs> Sometimes the lemons are your limits. And that's my new show, Limonless. <laughs> I that's don't fun. think so. I don't think that's actually permitted. That's it's fun. a thing where he reaches in the body and he's like, I left my lemon at home. And that's like every episode that happens. It's not a good show. It's not a good show, but it'll run for three seasons. Do lemons just get hard? Like 20 years? How excited are they? <laughs> Come on. Go, go, go. Do it in the next I am thing. good friends with my manager. One of the things we do together is check out the local rib fests near our workplace and go after work. We had planned to attend the upcoming Rib Fest in Waterloo, Ontario. Y'all have more than one Rib... Okay, I guess y'all have more than one Rib Fest. Are you from Waterloo, Ontario, or love ribs? (laughs) Uh, But it turned out my manager forgot he had a wedding to go to later that day. I suggest... Whoa! That's a big slip! Yeah, I suggested he could still... It was his wedding. (laughs) I suggested he could still come and take the ribs to go. (laughs) Brothers, can you bring your own food to a wedding? If so, are ribs okay? And that's from Just Marinated. That's fun. It's pretty good. Now, are you, are you here? Wow, right. close. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What people don't know is we're calling attendance up here. Yes. That's the first time. You'll all get a turn. <laughs> we're all going to ask all of you. I, I do not know if you can bring your own food to a wedding, but I would posit that ribs are right up there with the worst option to choose. Right, yeah. <laughs> If we're going to start making this part of the social consciousness of America, yes. we need to start with the a, hot, a hot pocket you have in the breast pocket of your right. jacket. Is there a time between now and the wedding for your manager to develop with the bride and groom a sort of in-joke about ribs? <laughs> <laughs> to where it would be kind of cute and sweet to bring a bunch of ribs to the wedding? Like, oh, you remembered from last Wednesday. <laughs> When we were talking about ribs in a conversation that, if I remember, you were really the driving force of. <laughs> Maybe you could just text them, like, wouldn't it be funny if I brought ribs to your wedding? And then you do it and, like, no, it wasn't. But anyways, I'm nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Are we talking about the reception or the ceremony? This is a good question, Griffin. If I, if I went to a rib festival and ate a bunch of ribs and then went to a wedding right after, the thought that I would be unable to perish from my mind... It would become an obsession while I was there is don't touch that wedding dress. <laughs> and I would have no reason to touch the wedding dress in the first place. I've never had that temptation before. But if I had that Casey Saucy. masterpiece all over yeah, my sure, fingers. Yeah. The, I don't know the moment of the whole thing where you think to yourself, now it's a good time to eat my ribs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, the big play is like, dun, 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 and everybody like looks to the bride and you're like, hell yeah, here I go. <laughs> someone, someone hold my bell, I'm going in. Well, if you're standing at like the pulpit, that's a perfect time, no one's looking, baby. Yeah, but if exactly. you're at the back, it doesn't work so there, good. There's one person that can do that, it's the officiant. If you're the officiant, you can eat ribs, because that's the one time nobody's looking at nobody's you. Nobody's looking in that direction, you're to fine. To be fair though, if you were the officiant, everyone look back as the like bride comes in, look back, you got <laughs> salsa all over your face. face. <laughs> I missed lunch, dearly beloved, shut up. <laughs> oh boy. What if though? <laughs> <laughs> Because here's the thing, even if you didn't eat them at the wedding, if you rolled up with a styrofoam container of ribs, they're like, what are you doing? Like, don't worry, these are for later. Yeah. <laughs> or you would, ru- you would ruin their wedding if you said to them, don't worry, I'm going to eat these ribs at some point and you won't even notice. I'm on you like fucking Slylock Fox my entire special day. <laughs> Rachel could have been walking down the aisle. If I knew somebody was trying to eat secret ribs, it would have been... That's your whole day. Especially if they just, like, slit the note under your, like, dressing room door that was just like, you don't know who I am, but I'll be yeah. in the crowd eating ribs. I'm going to be scanning that shit like Terminator, like... Nani? Oh, Nani. No, I was just getting a tissue. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. What if you did know the person? That would be the best. That's it's like what secret. I'm hey, uh... Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it just popped right up. It just popped right up. It's a haunted doll watch. I got a twist for you, though. No dolls this time. Uh, I know, right? Welcome. It's a tr- treat just for you, Pittsburgh. We just gets to the... See, here's the problem with the haunted doll game. There's 800 listed, and five people are selling them. Can I, can I guess? 
Is it a haunted train set? Uh, no, sir. This is a female spirit companion seduction pendants. <laughs> hey, um, J-Man, there are a lot of words in there that together do not form a coherent idea. And can I say, I don't know what the object is that's being yes. sold. Perfect. Um, <laughs> this listing is heteronormative, so I'm going to say anybody spirit companion seduction pendant. Hey, that's very open-minded of you. Thanks for making this terrible thing you're about to read applicable to everyone. Now we are all complicit in this. You all thought right. you were safe. No, sit in it. You might yeah. want to fuck this pendant. We don't know. You don't know. Spirit companion seduction necklace. Here's the listing that I'm going to read to you verbatim. These guys will be pleased to meet you. Whoa. There's more than one in the necklace? These spirits are looking for a companion. Being a spirit can get lonely. That is why they are looking for a special someone who can give them attention. And I promise they will also attend to you and your needs. <laughs> so Dan Aykroyd, if you're reading this, <laughs> these spirits are very sexual. <laughs> and looking for intimacy. Nice. <laughs> this is my favorite. Tell me what you are looking for in a companion, and I will find one that will suit your needs. <laughs> this person's, the fiction that this person has crafted is, I have a wide array of horny ghosts trapped in necklaces. <laughs> you tell me what you're looking for, and I will match dot gross, and I will find one for you to enjoy. It's like a spectral horny Build-A-Bear situation. <laughs> I will send you one that is everything you would hope for and more. Fuck. They are deeply intimate, caring, and love spirit who need a special someone to call their very own. They thrive on your pleasure. Oh, no! And will do anything in their power to make you happy. Holy shit! That's terrifying! Yeah, ghost powers. <laughs> they are also powerful protectors and will ensure that, quote, no one will ever hurt you again. <laughs> That's a fucking That's just... tall order for a necklace ghost. And also, hey, hey, Sam, can I read back what I've written here and you let me know if this sounds okay? <laughs> Does this sound like the ghost is gonna kill him? <laughs> sounds like the ghost is gonna kill him, right? Oh, I already hit send. Whoops. Oops. Uh, just a uh, quick update. This is where it got sad for me. Uh, okay, I was curious. They will block anything negative from coming your way. Choose necklace style. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, it's great. Nice. You would think the ghost in the necklace would be a, a kind of in twain, <laughs> but I guess this sexual necklace will make me uh, essentially immortal, bulletproof, and will make me orgasm every single night. But it's a little dangly for my taste. <laughs> hey, that's a beautiful necklace. Is that jade or opal or Greg? <laughs> it's Greg. It's Greg, my boyfriend. It's a princess cut Greg. <laughs> <laughs> you will get spirit necklace, charging pouch, and... Charging pouch? What? You, have to, you have to recharge your sex ghost? <laughs> Sorry. Greg, I'm just not feeling it tonight. Put me in the pouch, Sheila. <laughs> Greg goes so sleepy. I like this. This is I, fucked up. I put my iPhone 11 on your sex necklace charging pouch, and it got to full battery instantly. As a buyer, you're purchasing the jewelry only. The infused energies are a free gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how they get you, isn't it? All of our items are authentic and powerful. The end. <laughs> All right. All right. I have another question here. Let me find a good one. How much for the doll? Oh, thank you. It's the worst part. <laughs> it costs, and I kid you not, $68. Fucker. <laughs> So is it a bidding war? Can we bump that shit up a little bit? Buy it now, baby. And Buy Justin, I have to ask you another question, and this one is arguably the most important. Uh, what does it list the condition as? Because if it's <laughs> anywhere near used. 
Um, Even like new is pushing it a little bit for my... Okay, I got another question for you. Two in a row? That wasn't me. It's not me. I want to munch. I want too much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is tour manager Paul breaking in with an unprecedented. Yeah. Munch Squad special update edition. I'm so glad they're here. Go ahead, Paul. If you could just. A podcast within a podcast nestled within another podcast. Right. (laughs) Uh, many of you are aware, as has been noted on a previous edition of Munch Squad, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken's entree into the chicken sandwich ongoing wars of 2019 with the Kentucky Fried Chicken and Donut Sandwich. That, of course, being... Did you bring us these sandwiches, Paul? (laughs) Well... KFC had been test marketing these sandwiches in three cities across America. Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, and Pittsburgh, PA! I... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, is that pride? (laughs) (laughs) This is not an exaggeration. I can smell them. I can smell them now! I can smell them literally for here. Come on, Paul, come on! It was, it was strongly suggested to me, meaning Justin threatened to fire me if I didn't bring you guys some sandwiches. Yes. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay, when I talked to Paul about this, this was such a better idea when, A, they were hot. <laughs> B, I wasn't talking for it professionally. So this is the sandwich. See, we hadn't just eaten dinner backstage. This is the sandwich. Oh, it's, it's two. I thought it would at least be one donut cut in half. It's two whole donuts, fam. Yeah. There is. I'm a, upset by how dry the donut. It looks like a bagel. I want to warn you guys, there's a sauce. And I can't fathom why that would be the case. Um, and we will you, not eat in the microphone because we love you. Yeah, you're so. not going to simulate what it's like for me every time we sit down to record a podcast. Oh, God. Why is it gooshing out the bottom? Oh, no! (laughs) There's a lot of squid gizm down here. Oh, my God. I don't want to do this. Okay. Okay, uh, audience, would you count down from three, please? Three. Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to take a second fucking bite. That's all I can do. Um, My instant reaction is, how did they fuck that up? It's two donuts and a chicken waffle, and it is like eating a sand dune. That is by far the blandest donut. A donut! It's a donut, Colonel! And it has no flavor to it. All of the flavor seeped up the bottom. Like Paul, the, do you want like to buy? the sugar was trying to escape. You want to buy, Paul? I, uh, I, I, sorry, I, I probably should have mentioned something. I buried the lead a little bit. Um, they had a special deal running. When you buy three, you get 97 more. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, wait. Just hold on, wait. Hold on. They may just be empty boxes. Would anybody like one? Much as I would love to see you guys eat 100 of these, these are going to be out by the merch table immediately following the show. They will be free with purchase or without purchase. Just get them the fuck out of this building. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Amanda. We did not really get Justin's take on it. No, keep it there. I want to yeah, remember. No, it's funnier in concept. Paul, I am going to need more white wine, my dude. I assume that's obvious. You're also fired. But if... <laughs> You could bring the white wine first. That would be um, uh, that would be great. 
I was, I was honestly really excited about it. I was kind of, too. I was kind of a little bit, thank you, Paul. What was your review, Justin? You didn't tell us. You're the fucking Munch God Squad captain. Uh, Munch God. Yeah. Like You're the that. Munch God. Thank you. In short, not delicious. Not good. <laughs> it feels, I've dulled the receptors that say, like, not food, not food. <laughs> right. But it actually triggered them with this. But... If I have to give you my longer review. Right. Farm what the wisdom. What is happening? Farm wisdom. Eat a donut and then go to farm wisdom. I snuck all of them in. I wanted to treat you guys and Pittsburgh. We've never been here before. I wanted to give you all the hits. I, yeah, but I went through the work of finding questions and you could have just said, find one. <laughs> Okay, but we've, first of all, we've done a lot of questions. Don't be that way. Hey, how about, how about I let you read them? This come to us from uh, Must Be the Milk. I need to drink some white wine. It's from Must Be the Milk. We just got some, uh, some farm wisdom, and I'll let Travis kind of share some of these greatest hits with you. They just start with their. Well, wow, that's a lot of farm wisdom. Huh. I like that this is. I'm talking to the microphone. Yeah, the microphone here. is This sweater. is a fact listed here. White cows are bad luck. <laughs> Based on what? Life is simpler when you plow around the stump. <laughs> so that also sounds like a Big Johnson t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I like this. So this is in a list of farm wisdom, right? If it rains on Easter Sunday, it'll rain for seven Sundays. Uh, life is simpler when you plow, plow around the stump. A dream told before breakfast will come true. <laughs> what? What does that have to do with the farm? No, also, one, no one talks about their dreams during breakfast in the big city. <laughs> this one that's incredibly threatening. If you sweep under the bed of a sick person, that person will never regain his strength. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get your strength. No! Under here. Hi, this is Griffin McElroy, the youngest brother. I'm going to do the ads for you, so uh, strap right in, pay attention, because the, they know if you don't, pay attention, and we get in trouble. Our first sponsor is Quip. Quip makes a good toothbrush, a really, really good toothbrush. They've got, uh, you know, the little case, and you can put, stick that up on your mirror, and now it's like your mirror is a cool toothbrush cowboy with a badass holster. Well, you pop that thing right off the mirror, no problem, Switch, flip it and switch it, and now it's a travel case. And that's really handy for me, uh, just a guy on the go who loves his teeth and wants to keep them safe from uh, plaque and danger. They got sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer, gentle guiding brushing. It's get, It guides the gentle brushing, some might say, for the dentist recommended two minutes with 30-second pulses ensuring an even clean for those chompers. All, the last thing you want is a quarter of your mouth being super dirty while the rest is sparkling nice. They got uh, thoughtful features that make brushing something you actually want to do twice per day instead of a, a, just a horrible activity that you despise. Quip right now starts at just 25 bucks, and you get your first brush head refill for free at getquip.com slash mybrother. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better, but you got to go to getquip.com slash mybrother to get your first refill free. Go right now to getquip.com slash mybrother. Also going to talk about Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the advertiser that we are doing right now. They have uh, all kinds of good food. Uh, but here's the thing. They're going to send you... Do you all like escape rooms? Do you all like little puzzle boxes? Because you can think of uh, Blue Apron box as a puzzle box. And the reward for solving the puzzle is good flavor and good food that tastes good and makes you feel good after eating it. And you get all the little puzzle pieces, but here's the thing. They also send you a recipe, and that's basically like a little guy that comes to the box, and you you open up his container, and he takes a deep breath, and he says, here's how to solve it. Get, get, first of all, cut up those peppers. Uh, so that's how cooking works. They got, uh, they got three flexible plans. You can choose from a variety of chef-designed recipes and get perfectly portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. The hard parts are done for you. You have fun. You learn new kitchen skills with each meal. And their menu is carefully designed and tested by their test kitchen chefs. And they, they use uh, unique specialty ingredients to bring chef-quality recipes to your dinner table. So start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home without the hassle at Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu. Get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash mybrother. That's blueapron.com slash mybrother. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. 
Thank you, everybody, for listening to uh, this episode of Mabim Bam. It is a live one. We just got back from a big wild tour. October is going to be sort of a silly month for us, but we are very much looking forward to uh, all the exciting activities we've got coming up. You can check out the uh, rest of our tour schedule for 2019. If you go to our website, that's McElroy.Family, and uh, just, just check out all the stuff we got there. We get new merch up. Uh, October's about to roll around, which means we're about to add a bunch of new merch to the site. And I don't know what it is, because I'm, uh, you know, kind of the cool guy <laughs> around here. I don't pay a lot of attention to the business. For me, it's just all about the, uh, you know, my stunts. But you can see all that stuff at McElroy.Family. Uh, thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on that. You know what? All this stuff I do at the we, we do at the end of the episode. So I'm not going to repeat it here. I just want to spend this time saying thank you so much for all your support over these years. About to round 500. That's wild to me. Uh, and, yeah, that's, I mean, that's about all I got. Uh, you know, support local business. And uh, talk to you later. Macho man to the top rope. The flying elbow. The cover. We've got a new champion. We're here with macho man Randy Savage after his big win to become the new world champion. What are you going to do now, match? I'm going to go listen to the newest episode of the Tights and Fights podcast. Oh, yeah. Tell us more about this podcast. It's the podcast of power. Too sweet to be sour. Funky like a monkey. Woke discussions, man. And jokes about wrestlers' fashion choices. Myself excluded. Yeah. I can't wait to listen. Neither can I. You can find it Thursdays on Maximum Fun. Oh, yeah. Dig it. I just realized I'm going to be absent-mindedly eating. <laughs> no, that's why I clo- I did yeah, not I want to put look it out of at arm's it reach anymore. This sick. sad limp. Donut. I'm having the opposite effect, where my ba- brain's trying to go. It's two donuts and fried chicken, baby. That's good stuff. And I have to actually visually see it to remember. No, that's dry stuff. Uh, let's get okay. So uh, we have handpicked some that you have sent in ahead of time. Thank you all so much for sending in all these great questions. There's we have a lot of you here. A lot of you. Wow, we have a so microphone uh, on the and and very high up, like a wave of humanity crashing down upon me. Oh wow! Yeah, they just don't stop. Hi, I'm Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. What's up? Um, so I work in a hipster independent bookstore slash coffee shop cafe restaurant dealio. Uh, That's a lot of stuff you do in one biz. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And uh, one of, uh, our menu like really prides themselves on having a lot of vegan options. And one of the options is a spicy five bean vegan chili. If you can't see, uh, Emily has just done a great deal of quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um,. First of all, I don't think it's especially spicy. Okay. Which, like, I understand that that's a matter of opinion, but I also don't think there are five different beans in it. Well, that's <laughs> that's a huge problem. I would also I would point out, Emily, it is not titled Five Different Bean Chili. Right. <laughs> sure. There are just at least five beans in it. I mean, I I guess so. Uh, two of the supposed five beans are light red kidney beans and dark red kidney beans. Arguable. And then one is like a great northern bean, which I think we have maybe like one time out of every 20 when the chili is made. So really, I think we're looking at like 3.5 beans. Okay. Okay. Best. And last of all, I don't think it's chili. Okay. Okay. I was so worried you were going to say it's not vegan. It's... And that was going to be a much bigger issue. Um, one of the beans is pepperoni. Uh... <laughs> Somebody's like, oh, it's getting real thick. We need to add some more water to it. And I'm like, you, I don't. Just like, oh. just like mama does it. <laughs> With that good so, country chili. Now, so you don't mean like watering it down to like up the profit margin, <laughs> right? You're no, cutting I your mean, faux chili. It decides that it has like thickened up too much and it needs to be thinner, which to oh. me okay. stops it from being a chili. We've all gone through a lot of ed- like eating distress up here, so. What's, what is your question? So I just want to know, like, how do I break it to my employers that maybe they're falsely advertising this right. three bean soup? This 3.5 <laughs> bean soup. And how, and how do I, like, look a customer in the eye when they go, is the chili good? And I have to be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? I have before uh, had, like, restaurant employees where I've said, like, is this good? And they've gone, no. Here's <laughs> what you want to get. And I have never appreciated that honesty yes, more. Yes, that's, a, that's that a big moment. tip. Guarantee Where right I'm like, there. Oh, thank you, God. Because there's nothing worse than, right? Having a restaurant employee be like, oh, yeah, I love it. And you get it like, 
This is the worst thing I've ever had. You just need to find an obtuse way of answering. Like, is the chili good? And you say, oh, I love chili. <laughs> <laughs> but is this one good? I love chili. <laughs> Period. The, the danger there is if you try to go for that honesty tip and you're like, no, chili's not chili and it sucks shit and it's only 3.5 beans. And they're like, I want it. Yeah, they may really want chili and still have to order it under duress. And then they eat it and they're like, you fucking lied to me. That was good as heck. <laughs> so they say fuck, but not hell. <laughs> I mean, okay. Maybe that's it. Like, is it good? You say, there are some people who believe it to be good. A chosen few. The super taster. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, all right, we covered the spicy thing, subjective. The beans, it's got more than five beans in every serving, I'm sure. They're covered there. <laughs> Third, and we just talked about chili in our last episode, but like, anything chili. Anything could chili, if you think about it. A book is just word chili. <laughs> yeah, Griffin, A I guess tree I'm... is just leaf chili. <laughs> Emily, does that help? Um, I think so. Nice. Oh, nice. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Let's go here. If I can make a quick PSA, uh, some of you are probably fighting the temptation to rush back and get some of these donuts. Let me say one, please don't do that. That would be an extremely bad look for that to be our like downfall. Like that's the, all, the Macro Brothers used to be cool until those people were all killed in that <laughs> chicken donut stampede. And secondly, just like human to human, don't do this thing. They're right? awful. Yeah, let me say, we, we enjoy a lot of so bad it's good things here at MBMBM. This is so bad it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Corey. Cool. I, I want there to be at least one left when I leave tonight at the end of the show. Yeah, yes. I want to see some restraint. <laughs> okay. Corey, we Corey. apologize. This is Corey's moment. Yes, it is. All right. So... Uh... <laughs> The stage. Take the stage, Corey. So, um, I have a friend. He's a drummer, and he wanted to start a band with me because he likes the things that I can do with my voice. Okay. Um, as far as singing goes, and he kind of gave me free range on what the genre could be. Uh huh. And I am a big fan of ska punk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> have you ever thought of just calling it skunk? It, it, yeah. <laughs> um, it's fun to mash things up, but... It's called the poor man show. <laughs> Ooh, that was withering. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, if, if, I, if I sounded condescending, I didn't mean it. I actually <laughs> genuinely meant it. So anyway, um, you know, we've got most of, like, the components coming together, and my roommate plays the trumpet. Okay. So I thought... <laughs> a trumpet well, is applauding. Yeah, so, so I asked her, I'm like, would you ever want to, like, do this thing? And unfortunately, she does not share the same love of ska as I do. Oh, I thought you were going to say your roommate was unable to because they were already a member of so many ska bands. <laughs> yeah. No, just a marching band. So, um, Which is like a big ska band when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's where the root of my, my yeah. love for the, the genre lies. Okay. But I'm... Asking you guys, what would be a good way to convince her to play a trumpet in a possible ska band? Does she already own checkerboard vans? <laughs> she might have to borrow mine. Are you wearing them right now? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. There's a... You're, I gotta say, you're halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> you may not need them. Uh, I could you, just make the trumpet noises on my own, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, break oh, up, break yeah up, do so. that, but with an earshot of your roommate. And everyone's like, no, that's, that's, not that's right. the wrong embouchure. No, no. And then they'll have to like, okay, all right, do it like this. And then they're like, wait, I love this. Oops, I love ska yeah. rule. Oh, tell your roommate that Oscar Isaac was in a, a ska band there called The Blinking Underdogs. In the um, early 2000s, you can find videos of it on YouTube. Enjoy. Travis is his, on his street I'm very team. excited about this fact. Yes. And clearly, so are all of you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good. I'm trying to... Okay, here's the perspective I'm approaching this from. I'm trying to think of what... <laughs> Justin, stop eating it. Thank you. 
Thank you. You're right. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't trained... want to turn this show into fucking Elmo's world. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you no, at home, Mr. Justin Noodle, went back for another bite. Uh, I am trying to think of what you would have to ask to do to me to get me to join a Scott band. And the answer is there's no way. What if they named it after you? That's the worst case. <laughs> Griffin's good ska band. So what I'm hearing is I have a new band name. Yes. Shit. <laughs> yes. Uh, money? That's probably how they get a lot of people to join bands. It's like that works. Like I'll Venmo you a twenty. If you sure. Want. Yeah. Say it exactly like that. <laughs> because that seems totally trustworthy and legit. <laughs> right. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Nice. It probably does it. That was we very nice again. of you to say so. Thank you, Corey. Uh, can we get who's over you here? Are up. Yes. yes. Whoever's yes. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hi, Hi Ryan. Ryan. I'm a professor here at Carnegie Mellon. And oh, nice. You've all heard of it. Yes. Is anybody Ryan's student? What do you teach? Computer science. Computer science. Okay. What a, what a cold... Back in my day, I knew all my teachers' names. What's wrong with you all? Anyway, what's up, Ryan? Right, so I have to make up like, a lot of tests and uh, homeworks and things. And I, every week I get emails from the students with excuses, you know, about why they can't do it. Right. And they ask me, can I take it later? Right. Take it later. Right. And uh, I can think of like three strategies. Just always say yes. Yeah. Always say no. Mm. Or like drill down in the excuse and try to figure out if it's bullshit or not. Right. Uh -huh. So what's, what's the best strategy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, these excuses, yeah. are they... Do they have a, even a whiff of legitimacy to them? How good, how good are you, what is, how, evaluate your own barometer for bullshit. What Griffin said. Yeah, one time I got, um, my twin sister is graduating from USC on the same day as the final exam. Can I go to California to be there for the ceremony? Okay. That's good. Hmm. But, no, I'm with you, Brian. The hackles on the back of my neck rose. A twin sister? Who's ever heard of such a thing? <laughs> I, I want to I hit you with this. Computer science is very important and will soon be the only job that there is. <laughs> but hack me, hack me up a burger. Yum, yum. Uh, uh, but I wish that college had better prepared me for how much of my adult life would be comprised of making up excuses for not doing things. <laughs> and I wish that my teachers had taken a little bit longer to teach me how to lie about that sort of thing. So maybe this is a moment for you to really have an impact in someone's life. Don't waste their, <laughs> don't waste their time with ones and zeros. Right. Really teach them how to lie really good. <laughs> yeah. Like give, I wish Give them my, some notes back, like, yeah. hey, uh, whether the twin sister thing is legit or not, it seems weird. Just say my sister, twin sister is oddly specific. And don't ask me if you could go to California. That's kind of up to you. One of the things we do in the adult world is we keep the general. So say I'll be out of town, unavoidably yes. out of town. Too many details. People start pick, 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 pick. <laughs> Also, have you ever thought about, like, I assume that most teachers feel this way, but this is what I now as an adult feels like. There are things that I skipped or just didn't do in, like, high school and college that now I find myself in circumstances where that knowledge would be really useful. Sure. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. So have you ever thought about when someone's like, I don't want to do that project? Like, you don't have to do it. But someday, you'll, wanna, you'll want to have done it. <laughs> right. And you did. I don't care. I'm Brian. I'm Brian. I'm doing my own thing over here. I'm fine. I'm already this an adult. This is a bad teaching that, technique you know you're what? doing. I don't think I'm helpful. saying it out loud and it is bad. Like, hey, should I learn this? I don't know. You've invented Mr. Feeney's arch nemesis. <laughs> Mr. Meany. Mr. Meany. He just cares too little. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's oh, bad. gosh. You got to do the third one. It's harder, but either of the two teachers is going to is gonna net you a great deal of trouble. Cause you're either gonna get, you know, that 0% on rate my professors, if that's even still a thing, probably not. It is? Fuck. Wouldn't have thought that that would have still been like legal in 2019. <laughs> or you'll be the pushover teacher that's like, 
you know, go take it. It's an easy test. But if you are the Judge Judy of this college, <laughs> that, I, you, maybe try this. Uh, can't wait to see pictures. Have fun. Oh. Uh oh. And you can you That's can your computer good. science guy. You can dig into the fucking exif. <laughs> Uh, location data, see when it was taken, where it was taken, whatever the technical terms, you know all the ones and zeros stuff. Why are you being so fucking judgmental, Ryan? I'm not the computer science professor. I can't. Fuck. We've been tackling this question for like four minutes now. I can't believe we haven't brought up bribery. Ryan. <laughs> just say, yeah, bring me a local, if you don't mind, bring me a local delicacy from <laughs> wherever you're going and uh, bring it back. Uh, I sure do love those you know, whatever they have it. I'm not entirely sure where USC is, but. <laughs> and then you get snacks. And then who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's why you have a job in the first place is to be able to buy snacks. <laughs> so you really just cut out the middleman. Does that help? That helps, thanks a lot. Thank you, Ryan. Right. Yeah. Good. Let's go over here. Yes, approach the microphone. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi, so recently I've been binge-watching Survivor. Yeah. Okay. And now I have... Where are you at? Um, season 12. Uh, Suri is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Hi. Okay. Yeah. She's the best. U.S. Um, or Australian? Probably hey, U.S., Justin. US. Get into the dark web, y'all. You can find some Australian Survivor. They choice. fucking kill each other. It's wild. That's <laughs> yeah, choice. Anyway. So, anyways, my new life goal is to be on Survivor. Yeah. So, okay. what should I include in my audition tape? Yes, okay. You've come to the right place. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've thought about this exact question before honesty time. Okay, a good... Justin! Oh, oh sorry, yeah, 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 for sure. No, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I can't even eat a chicken donut. <laughs> How am I supposed to eat grubs? You just close your eyes and pretend you're in the Lion King with those tasty-ass-looking bugs. Now, how many people here think that they would make their video that's like displaying their, their like survival prowess. That's right? a big strategy. Oh, good, I good, see. good. Everyone's right. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Make a video where you just barrel the camera and say, I will do whatever the producers tell me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. You're you don't want to look show. too capable. That's boring. Say, listen, if you guys put me on a deserted island, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing. I cannot cope with this. That it will be bad for me. Good for television. Can I bring... That would be my video. Would be me sitting atop a throne in a velvet suit, <laughs> sipping a gold chalice, just saying, "I'm a fancy boy." Don't you want? <laughs> don't you want to knock me down a peg? Ooh, ooh la la! <laughs> I know I only get one comfort item, but I have six different inhalers. <laughs> <laughs> Can I bring my cockatiel Beauregard? <laughs> <laughs> my manservant is my comfort item. I'd be lost without Gregor. <laughs> Day two, they'd be like, we're eating that cockatiel. For sure, yeah. for sure, but for sure. But Beauregard's my son! <laughs> we're, eating, we're eating your manservant. Uh, That's fine. Have you... Just spare the bird. <laughs> have you whipped up an audition tape before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That laugh. That's says a it yes. All. That's a confirmed yes. I, I have an idea. Okay. Okay, so I'll be running on a treadmill okay. while solving a puzzle. Okay. Oh, that's good. Athleticism and smarts. Athleticism oh, and good. smarts. Are, can you tell a lie to a trusted friend over the, t the phone while you do these two things at the same time? No. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you want to be on Survivor? <laughs> There's a great deal of deceit. There. I just feel like I can be really nice to everyone and then win. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> just like life. <laughs> um, can't. Uh, <laughs> do you have a famous friend? Well, that's good. Or are you famous for football? Or <laughs> that helps sometimes. A lot of those people get on. One time there was a season of Amazing Race and there was a guy on the show who was there because he was friends with Joey Chestnut who was also on the show. <laughs> well, that's a fucking cool life, I think. You know, you could sit in a tape that's just you and you turn and go, oh, Survivor, I don't want to be on it. And then turn back and they'll see it and be like, oh, now we really want her to be on it. Now we're what into it. What secrets is hiding? 
Um, Does any of that help? Yes. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Real. Oh, what, sorry. One other idea. Find out where they're filming and just go there and walk around in the background until they're like, I don't know. Do you want to eat some weird shit? Get over here. It's called. It's called Arriver. <laughs> That's pretty good. Also, also, God's honest truth, I didn't give you everything I had because I still have not ruled out the possibility of myself <laughs> applying to be on Survivor. That'd be good. Survivor as a snuff film. Come watch my brother Griffin die in the first episode. Uh, hello. Yes. Hi, what's your name? Yeah, raise, that, raise them shits up. Just, you oh may God. just want to oh no. it. Not like this. There you go, yeah. There you go, yeah, pro. Hey, my name's Nick. Hi, hey, Nick. Hi, um, Nick. So I just started a job, uh, well, just a month ago, started a job working for the parks as sort of a mini park ranger. All my parks are like a couple acres. Okay. Um, but Gotta start somewhere. Like That's more parks than I have. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm not exactly the owner. Okay. I'm like... We know how park rangers yeah. are. I don't okay. think park rangers park. own the park. Uh, yeah, so. I'm the park ranger here at Yosemite. Holy shit. <laughs> Um, so during training, my boss showed me all the things to do, and one of the things was I got to get all the dirt dirty, the old old leaves off the dirty park. old leaves. Yeah, yeah, sure. you got to get the nature off the um, cool nature. So show me the huge uh, <laughs> gas-powered like leaf blower. That was in my question. Uh, he showed me the leaf blower, and he the way my boss did it was he just turned it on and went to town, and everyone in the area sort of cleared out like because they didn't want to get leaves blown on them. That yeah, seems, natural, yes, good. That seems super rude. Um, so how can I politely tell people to stop eating their lunch and stuff? In the park. Before, <laughs> yeah, in the park. <laughs> Sorry, all park, parks closed. I clean leaves off of all the benches and stuff like that. Oh, man. So you're saying, how do you... So your boss is, like, turning on the leaf blower and everyone very sanely is like, well, I'm leaving. <laughs> yes. This is very bad. You're saying, can you go to people and say, like, Hi. Um, this is so random. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to start blowing leaves around. And I like to pretend like I'm nature. <laughs> uh, I like to call myself the wind. And then I walk around and I blow the leaves around. And if I don't do it once a day, I'll die. <laughs> I don't even have to do it once a day. It's just that at all, it's a park. At all hours of the day, there are people laying out uh -huh. and shit. But you don't have to blow leaves all day, right? No. At some Just point, lunch. the leaves are allowed to be where okay, they are. Wait, time out, Nick. <laughs> Who are these dipshits that go to a park and they're like, what's with all the leaves? <laughs> <laughs> so why can't someone do something about this? this? These are the same leaves that were here yesterday. This, this question is, is a real Kobayashi Maru because it is, I... When I am walking on the sidewalk and a like yard cleaning person, a person who is cleaning their yard, I don't know why I said it like that, has a leaf blower out and is blowing leaves onto the sidewalk or whatever the fuck, and I'm walking down that sidewalk, I don't know who has the right of way. <laughs> Every time I'm walking, I'm like, surely they're gonna stop before I get into the path of this, the cone of danger. But then I'll get closer and maybe they haven't stopped the leaf blower. And then my mind is like, actually, is there a rule about this? Because if they blow a little wind yeah. on me, what's the worst that happens? I will, I will say that a good, uh, a good way to combat that as the walker, have a like two-year-old with you because everyone wisely stops using it because we're all picturing the same thing, which is the kid going, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Nick, does that help? <laughs> How would that help? No, no, How Nick. Would any of that Nick, you're still here. What I'm hearing is that I have to be stone cold and just do it. Blow their asses away, man. No, Nick, yeah. don't do no, it. Here, walk out there when you know you're going to blow some leaves and say, like, hey, everyone, in 10 minutes, I'm going to be blowing some leaves, and if your sandwiches are still here, that's your fault. <laughs> but then, okay. Thank don't you. make me turn this into a sandwich blower. <laughs> All right. Oh, whoa. Oh. Wait, no, fuck. Nick, I got it. Walk up to somebody eating a sandwich, like, hey, have you ever wanted to see what it's like to blow leaves? <laughs> <laughs> and then you let them do it. In While their you area. eat the sandwich. And you eat the sandwich, you let them blow the and leaves. And they around. blow the sandwich out of your hand, and you're like, whoa! And then you trade lives. A little bit of that Tom Sawyer whitewashing the fence action. 
let them blow it. Like, did you have fun? They're like, yeah, I did. Thank you. And then you go about your business. That's fun. That's fun. That's Isn't a fun, that, fancy that's a good one. I like yeah, that. Yeah, why don't you tie a balloon to them and then just blow them away? <laughs> Does that help? All right. So, yes, thank you. Thank there you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, ben. How you doing? Good. Good. How are you? There's All something right. about a human being adjusting a mic stand that makes you feel like they're about to start a stand-up routine. It's, yes. And I, got, I just got really excited when Ben started to do that. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. It is going to be good. Ben, dazzle us. Will, will do. Uh, so I'm the mayor of my town. Uh, Pittsburgh? Uh, Pittsburgh? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, not Pittsburgh. Uh, Butler. Just a little north of here. It's not as cool as it sounds, I promise. Some butlerites. Okay. Uh, but I have It's a, gotta be kinda cool, Ben. It's kinda cool. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm mayor of a real <laughs> shitty town. No. No, butler rules. Okay, Nick, what's your question? Uh, so Mayor Nick. Sorry. I, I own a couple establishments where I sometimes bartend and I It's also, a Best Buy and a Blockbuster <laughs> video. You got it. Yeah, we, we have a real nice setup there. Yeah. Uh, but and I also like to like enjoy myself with my family around town. But my, my problem is that oftentimes people will just walk up to me and say, hey, aren't you the mayor? And I don't, I'm running out of things to tell them. I've tried yes. That's a good start. The problem is that most people don't have a follow-up. They're just like, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how it works. And uh, yeah. I've tried saying sometimes, but not right now, meaning I'm busy, but I can tell you when I get into a conversation. Okay. <laughs> Are you the mayor? Maybe. <laughs> now, Ben, were I, you elected to this position? <laughs> People is, voted for you, right? Maybe. Is this okay. one of those dog mayor situations where it's for the news? Have you thought about wearing it? I think we'd be better off if it was. <laughs> oh. Ben, I'm gonna hey, hey, Ben, I, I bet you're you. a great mayor slash bartender. <laughs> hey, I will have you, yeah, being down. I and Ben, so. how, what's the population of Butler? It's about 14, 15,000. Holy shit, that's a big fucking town, Ben. Okay. You made it sound like your two establishments were the only buildings in Butler. It's that and City Hall, How far which is, is in the back of one of your bars. How far is Butler from here? It's about 45 minutes to What the hour. fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Anything could be happening back in Butler, you're not there. If, <laughs> I guess my response would be, um, this is a town of 14,000 people. How the fuck do you not know that? <laughs> of course, I'm the mayor. Obviously, I'm the mayor. <laughs> you know me. I'm the mayor. Have you ever thought about having a t-shirt made that says, I'm the mayor, gotta love me? <laughs> That's fine. That's something. Not quite. That's something. Oh, also, maybe you could have like a specialty cocktail at your bars that's called like, are you the mayor? And then when somebody comes up and goes, aren't you the mayor? You just start making one and charge them. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, and it's when they're $48. Like, <laughs> It's really good. And then you can put that money towards, I don't know, fixing roads or whatever you do. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm just fun... trying to work through the power dynamics of going to a bar and the mayor is the bartender. <laughs> Tell me all your most vulnerable secrets. All right. Uh... <laughs> Spill your guts to me, the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have my mayor hat on right now. You can trust me. You can trust me. <laughs> Tell me about all the ordinances you violated. <laughs> It's cool. It's fine. Yeah, so we're having a party in my house. Do you have a permit for that fucking party? <laughs> now I'm a roadhouse mayor. <laughs> Does that help? That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Ben. ben. Mayor ben. ben. Okay. Can we bring the house lights back down? There's so many people. Hi. Thank you all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Brigadoon. Okay. Uh, so... Oh, we've made it to the end of another live experience. Time to start sweeping up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. This is the end of just another grueling tour. <laughs> three, oh, three days. Three, three days. days. We made it somehow. Uh, I want to first reiterate, please be cool about the donuts. They're ice, <laughs> they're ice cold. They cost $2 regularly. Please don't they're make a big deal. Fun. Let, let so me say, uh, because I have been this person in the audience who's like way up in the balcony or something, right? If you think it'd be funny to just like pick one up, take some pictures, and then throw it away, leave it on the table for someone up there 
who's going to bite into it. Because <laughs> there's someone up there who wants to really try it. And not in like a funny way. Yeah. Thank you to our former tour manager, Paul Saboran. <laughs> going to miss you, Paul. Thank you to uh, our father, Clint McElroy, and thank, thank uh, oh, and Schmanners. Thank you thank very you, much to Schmanners. Uh, Thanks to McKay and Sarah and Amanda for well, Amanda, especially for hauling out all those donut sandwiches <laughs> and making herself culpable in this terrible crime. That's fair. Amanda is our business manager, and apparently, at some point, she thought this is good for business. <laughs> Long, I, I, the, they, uh, oh, John Roger Rogers and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, but in the days is bad. Real good. You want that final? Absolutely. Oh. Thanks to Maximum Fun also for having us on the network. Thank you to Maximum Fun. Thanks, Maximum Fun. Okay. Final and Yahoo. please tweet about the sandwiches. No, don't tweet about the sandwiches. <laughs> tweet that you didn't get a sandwich. And Joel, how glad you and are. And how glad you are. Okay. This one was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers user Molly who asks. And I'm going to, it's a long question. And you're going to kind of know what it's about after the first sentence. So I'm going to take my time with the first sentence and then try and push really fast through the rest of the details. <laughs> is it possible that rain is Mars juice? I know they found water on Mars, so I think because Mars is above us, the rain comes from Mars. <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. The Greatest Generation is a Star Trek podcast that destigmatizes the very idea of having a Star Trek podcast. <laughs> We're Ben and Adam, the hosts of The Greatest Generation, and the technology we've developed is that nobody knows what you're playing in your earbuds. You know, with legalization, it's easier than ever to find out what's in your buds. <laughs> but we suggest that you legally find The Greatest Generation wherever you download your podcasts. We'll send it to you in a discreet, unmarked package, <laughs> and nobody has to know but us. That's The Greatest Generation, the Star Trek podcast that you didn't know you needed, yet makes you feel like you belong. <laughs>